Got it. Hi, Laura. Welcome, Vision Edge gurus here. And Megan, I will let you take it away by interviewing our very smart, lovely Laura. Awesome. <laughs> well, Laura, I'm so happy to have you here. I'm excited to dig into these questions some more. Um, the first one that I want to ask you about. So Vision Edge Marketing has been around since 1999. That was when I was born. So a long time. <laughs> uh, what drew you to deciding to start a marketing business to begin with? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you guys for having me. I think the world of web II, I am so glad that I found Jackie all those years ago. I mean, far more than just someone that helps with the website. Great sounding board. Just thank you, Jackie. Really appreciate everything you do to help our team. Uh, let's wind the clock back. So uh, I came to Austin in the end of 1982 just to give you context. That's when the only restaurants here were either Tex-Mex or barbecue, all right? And I, I went to work for, our, at the time, which was a very small company, or it was a, had a small satellite office. It wasn't a small company, but they had a small satellite office kind of here. And that was part of Motorola, semiconductor product sector, just to give you context. And when I came here, there were TI, IBM, UT in the government, and a few, 3M things, but really we were a pretty small world and getting people, uh, Jackie might not know this, but people paid people to come to Austin. <laughs> they actually gave them money to come here. <laughs> that doesn't happen anymore. Okay. So I went to work for Motorola. I worked there for 14 years and it was the most wonderful experience. And when I left, I went to work for a couple other companies. Now, fast forward in time, uh, it, it's 1999, and um, you might recall again back in history that Admiral Bobby Ray Inman had brought up MCC in the mid 80s, and uh, Semitech was here, and a bunch of other companies had started to come here. And so, the, a lot of the companies that had come from those entities were starting in Austin. So, we had all these startups. Does that sound familiar? We had all these startups. And they were all looking for marketing people. So in 1999, if you could spell marketing, you could get a job, okay? Now, if you can, that, that might even be true right now. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so being here for a long time and being fairly well established with a good track record, my phone rang a lot as they were looking for people. And I was working for one of the spinouts from MCC at the time. Uh, at, at the helm of their marketing. Uh, and they were looking for people that had product marketing and data backgrounds. I had a marketing science, data science kind of background, analytics, had done product launches, a little bit more than just the Marcom, but real tr traditional, what I would call a strategic and product marketing. Well, guess what? Everybody else's phone was ringing too. And so one of my colleagues called up and said, is your phone ringing like my phone's ringing? And I said, yes, he said, would this be a great time to start our own firm? I said, maybe. He said, it is. Let's do it. And that's how we got Vision Edge Marketing. And we converted some of our very first job offers into our clients. So that's a long story, but it gives you a little context. No, that's so cool. I've loved that whole story. But remember what happened in 2001, right? So we were going gangbusters. And it's 2000. Oh, and I have to say this. Our first website, just to put it in the context of why we're having this conversation, was hard coded. It was two pages and it cost us $25,000. <laughs> okay, all right, I should stop talking and let you ask the next question. But you do remember what happened in 2001, right? No, or you don't because you were only two years old. So, how about it was the dot com bubble that you're talking about, the dot bomb? The dot bob in Austin, because that's what we had. Every company in this town either was an E something or an I something. And mm -hmm. most of those uh, had, that had mushroomed up just disappeared. And as you also know, 9-11 came. So between the dot com and 9-11, it was serious times. Not like the mid 80s in Austin, which was devastating, but still very serious times for people in business. OK, I'll stop talking. You're up. <laughs> Okay. Can you speak a little bit about the businesses that you currently work with? How has that changed through the years? Are there any particular industries that you focus on now that you may not have at the beginning? Absolutely. Yes and yes and yes. Okay. 
so of course, when we first started, we were content to have the work that we had here in Austin. And most of those were pretty early stage young companies. Yes, we had a couple of big companies. We got uh, to work with the com companies like Cypress and Crystal Semiconductor. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Uh, Metroworks, which had become, eventually became a part of Motorola. We had some of those, uh, some 3M work. But most of the work outside of those were companies, some of them don't exist anymore, as you can imagine today, they didn't make it. Um, and when the, uh, and, and we were very focused on B2B and very focused on technology. I came out of technology, software, hardware. Um, my, my partner at the time, who has long since retired, smart man, um, Barry, he came out of telecom and networking. So those were our strengths. And there was a lot of that here in Austin. And so that was where we, built our business. Well, uh, when 9-11 came and the dot-com pain came, we had to, you know, we had to get smarter about getting business. The phone wasn't ringing like it had been, <laughs> even though, we, and we had grown through referrals and we had a lot of repeat business. And so uh, uh, we had great customers like ETS Lindgren, who we have enjoyed a re relationship with since very early on, but we needed to find new customers. So one of my areas of expertise had been in, and background had been in financial services. And uh, that included banking, insurance, um, mortgages, brokerage houses, things like that. And so that allowed us to get some footing into that industry. And that became a new industry for us to pursue. Very traditional industry, companies like Fiserv and others that you might, and banks and, and credit unions. Um, and then, um, we also started seeing a lot of interest from logistics companies. Uh, so that proved into being a new business. Well, today we work in really exciting industries that didn't even exist back then, like cybersecurity. Our first business in that space was with um, InfoGlide here in town, which long since been sold, and they had a fraud detection in business. So that was our entry in 2001. And we've been in that space ever since, which is a pretty long time. But still, cybersecurity and blockchain have significantly evolved. So that's an industry that we're in. And then medical devices. Again, I had some background in medical devices in, prior to uh, my uh, semiconductor uh, world. And so that converted into some new industries. Love that space. Love what those people do to help improve the quality of uh, people's lives. It's a great space. Okay, what happened? did that answer your question? Yes, that was great. And it's it's so cool that you were, I, I don't know. Those people are so important and what you do is so important. And I think that's such a great collaboration to have. <laughs> we love our customers. I I mean, I am I feel so blessed and so fortunate to have the customers that we have and they are remarkable. But I do wanna go back to talking about websites for just a moment. I know that's not the topic, but I do want to talk about it. So oh, in the early 2000s, we realized that we needed to have something other than this hard coded kind of website thing, because it was really expensive to have somebody coded for every single thing we wanted to make. And so we reached out and we found a, 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 a group here in town, uh, which was easy to do back then, because remember, we were in the bust and um, they converted our site to Joomla which at the time was recommended as a, as a platform and allowed us to make our own changes, right? And we did that for a number of years. And then it was time to really think about what came next and how we could evolve our site. And we had started to create a blog and we created our blog on this thing called WordPress, which was one of the first blogs, remember that? They didn't have websites, but they had blogs. And then eventually, this just goes to show you the evolution, they created this amazing website uh, system. And that's how we found Jackie when it's time to move from Joomla to WordPress. And we're glad we did. So um, just goes to show you how businesses have to evolve, stay on top of technology, make changes, make investments, uh, if they're gonna stay relevant, right, to, to their customers in the market. Thank you, Laura. I want to talk a little bit too about your blog itself. So I know that we've talked before about how you have so much content through the years. Um, but in 2020, I know that you put out a book that's called Fast Track Your Business. So obviously that's much longer than a typical blog post is. I believe it was about 200 pages, your book. 
Um, what inspired you to write this long form content and what was the process like for you to be able to write that? Okay, I'm gonna to have to give you some more context. Again, feel free to edit whatever you need. So Fast Track is actually my fourth book, just so you know that. Our first book was Gone Fishing, which is really about marketing and sales and marketing and sales alignment and positioning and all of that. Um, and uh, it was very well received in his long, it came out, I think in 2001. And uh, we had in 2001, we began to do a tremendous amount of work around performance measurement and management, especially for marketing. We began and are considered one of the pioneers of the marketing performance management space. Even though our company has very much always been about growth and growth strategy, we always have tied that to how do you make that measurable, right? And how do you measure the value of marketing to the business? How do you connect marketing to the business? All of those things have been a part of our roots. So that book came out in 2001. And then on the heels of that, um, because of our work in the performance management space, that led to the second book, which is Measure What Matters. Also, I think that's out of print. That book, uh, we were able and uh, began to develop a relationship with a publishing house. So the very first book we self-published, and in those days, self-publishing was kind of meh, you know? But today, everybody, yeah, that's, that's the whole thing, right? It's all about owning your own intellectual capital, your own intellectual property, instead of giving it away to a publishing house. And that led to a really great relationship. And our third book with that same company, which was uh, Metrics in Action, all based on the research that we do and what we have learned. In that same window of time, we were working with a gentleman, John Jacko, I'll, I'll say his name out loud, uh, at FlowServe. And we had a framework that we were using with him called the Growth Wheel. And he asked me to share that growth wheel in his organization. And everywhere he went, he asked me to come and talk about the growth wheel because that was a framework he was going, he was using internally to bring his team together and help grow. And every organization he went to, he uh, helped them have phenomenal growth. He's been, uh, I still, I'm still in touch with John. So while that's going on, and we're doing this work with John, work on the growth wheel, another gentleman who has retired from the industry and, and turned the reins over to a woman named Susan Print, Finch was Jim Obermeyer. And Jim Obermeyer came to me and said, I have a hole in our, my radio program. I had been a guest for him. Would you be a host, a radio host? And I said, no, <laughs> I'm not a radio host. <laughs> he said, you can have, do whatever you want. I just need this hole, these holes filled until I can find someone. There were like eight of them. I said, thought about it and I came back to him and I said, yes, I will do it on the following conditions. One, I want only interview the CEOs in Austin. We have so many great CEOs here. And the, this is now uh, maybe 2018. So Austin is really on the map by 2018, just to, again, back to historical context. And we have amazing CEOs here, but they, they don't get that much coverage because everybody always wants to talk to people in the big firms in California or on the East Coast. So I said, I want to talk to these CEOs and I want to focus on growth because that's what our company is all about is help. That's our passion is helping our customers accelerate their growth. So he said, he said, yes. So I got to talk to these um, people that I've known for a long time, like Dave Secor at Alter, right? Um, and Ziggy uh, Shanklet over at uh, uh, Wyclef uh, Security, all these different places. And I put those all together and into radio programs. And then we also captured some of that in short form. Okay, Megan, so keep that in mind. In, now go forward just a little bit and John comes back up. See, this is how the universe works. And he says, can you bring that growth wheel conversation to Pentair? I wanna do, I'm, I'm at Pentair and I wanna bring that. So I say, sure, I'll, I can bring that to you. And he says to me, when are you ever gonna put this in a book? And I said, oh no, I'm done with books. All done, never done another book. He said, really, this is worthy of a book. And between those interviews and John's encouragement, I came home and thought through how we might create a book using the growth wheel, which got renamed to the circle of traction and, and went down the path of creating the book. Now, a little side story that you probably will wanna edit out. Our publisher, Rich Hagel, at Raycon Communications, who had been awesome, 
uh, we talked about this book and we were gonna do this book together. And, um, and sadly he became ill and he has closed his publishing house. So once I finished the book with, I had to scramble to find out how I was going, what I was going to do next, how to get this book to, to come to life. And um, through lots of different ways, uh, Jennifer Thompson of Monkey See Media came into my world and she's the one who helped me pr produce Fast Track. And so you see, just life is all about those intersections of people. That's really what the journey is about, is the people. That's, that's what it's all about. Okay, that was a really long story. Did that answer your question? Yes, that was great. And I do agree that it's all about the people. And I know I've written blog posts too about how customer centricity is so vital to all businesses. Um, so I think that that was a great point for you to make too. Um, just to conclude this lovely interview, kind of bleeding into what you were talking about with customers being so important. So as a small business in Texas, I'm sure there's a lot of things that are great about running the business, but what would you say is the best part for you being a small business in Texas? Oh, well, I can, I guess a few things. One of the great things about the work we do is that we get to make a difference to the customers we support, that we serve. And that is a privilege. And I really enjoy doing that. That's probably the most important reason why I still get up in the morning is for them. I don't get up in the morning to write a bunch of blog copy. <laughs> that, 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 is not, that is not what gets, gets me up in the morning. But, but thinking about the customers we serve, how we can help them, how we can help them achieve their goals, help them be more successful, that's exciting. That gets us up in the morning. Uh, we're kind of at a place now where, and have been for quite a while, where how can we help the next up and coming uh, generation of, of growth strategists, marketing strategists, um, people in the marketing science, marketing ops spaces, uh, all, you know, people that are into um, uh, strategy, whatever it might be. And so we work very closely at bringing interns into our organization every semester. And that is exciting for me to see them grow, learn, right? I learn too, because one of the best ways to learn is to teach. Right, and sometimes I don't know anything, so I have to go learn it. <laughs> I don't know it either. So that's kind of a. I think those are two of the things about being a small business is being very hands on and being able to sh pass on the knowledge that you've acquired all these years, which we're not counting, right? We're not counting those years, but we're to be able to share that knowledge and know that others will be benefiting from that. Um, so I think those are two things. And those are honestly my favorite parts about working at a small business too. Okay, well, thank you, Laura. I'm gonna pass it off to Jackie if she has any concluding notes to make, but I really do appreciate you sitting down and going through these questions with me. Oh, you bet, Megan. Thank you for uh, asking them and for the interview. And if you uh, feel free to edit out whatever you need to. <laughs> you don't have enough confidence in your lovely talk here. Um, you actually <laughs> shared quite a bit of wonderful storytelling and knowledge with us, Laura. And I think it's um, no surprise to me because I think that you were the right choice for this interview and representing uh, professionals today. Um, so I, I thank you for being here as well. And we really wanna celebrate all types of businesses, including the ones that are our customers, but definitely small business because we are the fuel of the fire, right? So yes. Um, thank you for participating with us. We really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. And we so appreciate you, Jackie, and your team. Couldn't do 